Hello, this is Hadi Lisha uh, with you, this uh, special edition of uh, TCT uh, 2023. I'd love to go over my presentation at TCT and um, um, share the tips and tricks for cardiologists facing a peripheral problem. Um, this obviously has come up uh, way more frequently lately because of the expansion of complex interventions through alternative vascular access. Uh, structural interventions and also with cardiologists uh, um, intervening more on the peripheral vasculature and, and, and training more in that world. So I thought I would share my presentation with the audience. Uh, all disclosures, I'm a consultant uh, for Abbott Vascular, Abiumed, Cordis, Penumbra, Philips, and Shockwave Medical, but none of them uh, are directly um, uh, related to this presentation or pertinent to this presentation. So uh, most uh, cardiologists uh, who face a peripheral problem feel like uh, literally they're um, in the wilderness um, survival guide, unless they were specifically trained for that or they have personal experience. And uh, that is a very kind of concerning feeling sometimes. And of course, we always advocate for calling for help, uh, vascular help, whatever form it is at your institution, but also it will be great to kind of start working on it. It will be nice to be able to uh, either fix your own complications or deal with a vascular anatomy that is uh, very difficult uh, to get to the heart. Um, obviously, um, knowing your tools is absolutely the name of the game in this kind of field. And uh, having access to inventory and peripheral tools is one of the most important aspects. You, you could know how to fix a problem or deal with a situation, but if you don't have the tools, uh, you simply would not be able to deal with that. So dealing with uh, coronary catheters and wires is not going to be solving the problem most of the time. You really have to have dedicated uh, uh, vascular equipment. It doesn't have to be extensive, but basic uh, to get you out of trouble. Uh, I divided the needs for vascular skills into five main categories. Uh, first of all, for cardiologists getting to the heart, uh, we have been facing a lot of patients with uh, very tortuous calcified uh, iliac or axillary arteries or subclavian arteries. So getting there would require also a set of uh, skills. Uh, the large bore access has become um, very, very dominant in uh, surgical turndowns and patients with complex disease who would not qualify or are too high risk for surgery. Uh, and basically the single access technique has taken over as one of the main techniques. And for that, pay, uh, physicians need to kind of know how to deal with large, with uh, uh, vascular anatomy that's uh, challenging. Uh, so, uh, thirdly, dry closure is absolutely necessary for improvement of procedural morbidity and uh, uh, procedural uh, positive outcomes. And there are multiple ways to uh, uh, close a large bore access percutaneously and lose the least amount of blood. And we'll go through that. And it's part of the skills that are required. Um, limb perfusion has a direct relationship with uh, mortality. Uh, especially in patients with cardiogenic shock requiring a mechanical support and now facing an ischemic limb that increases mortality and obviously has to be dealt with by cardiologists who are placing mechanical support. And finally, uh, the most important aspect that people think of from a vascular skills standpoint is dealing with complications. And we will uh, talk about that. So let's start with the first one, kind of getting to the heart. Uh, obviously, the three main difficulties in getting to the heart is uh, tortuosity, calcified arteries, and uh, stenosis on the way to the heart. And how do we deal with those? Uh, we have a set of wires, catheters, and sheaths um, that uh, need to be chosen. Uh, obviously, it's very dependent on what you have on your in, uh, in your inventory and uh, from your experience and training. So obviously wires 035 or 018, hydrophilic wires uh, are absolutely necessary in these cases where the J-wire non-hydrophilic would not cross. 
uh, that would have to be mostly made out of nitinol uh, to um, minimize the risk of kinking and for torque transmission. Uh, and obviously, once the lesion or the tortuosity is crossed, it would have to be exchanged for a stiff O35 wire. And uh, typically, this is the glide wire, but multiple companies uh, make equivalent wires. So whatever you prefer and have experience with. Uh, from a catheter standpoint, we prefer flexible uh, catheter with soft tips, the least traumatic tips to minimize the risk of atherosclerotic injury and distal embolization. And for sheaths, we really love hydrophilic, um, dedicated sheaths, especially braided sheaths um, that have a, another coating um, uh, on the surface, uh, kind of eliminating that rugged surface of the multiple coils. That would be also a long sheath, 45 or 65, to get through the tortuosity and minimize the difficulty of crossing to the heart with every catheter exchange. Um, secondly, calcified stenosis, a new technology has surfaced in the last few years, which is intravascular lithotripsy that has helped us tremendously achieve cardiac procedures uh, while there is a major calcified obstacle to the heart, including iliac stenosis, like what you see on the video on the left side, and uh, basically using an intravascular lithotripsy balloon at two atmospheres, very short, uh, very um, low atmospheric pressures with minimal vascular wall injury leads to optimal expansion of the lesion and passage of the large bore sheath. Uh, what you see on the uh, left, uh, bottom left here is a left subclavian artery stenosis that was encountered from uh, when an axillary access was undertaken to place mechanical support and uh, also intravascular lithotripsy was used to uh, open up the way and lead to advancement of a large bore sheath from a left axillary access for a successful complex coronary intervention. And the third, um, um, the second um, a major uh, obstacle to the heart is tortuosity after calcium. And uh, we face that quite often in the radial access from a subclavian and innominate artery tortuosity. It's almost daily practice. And for that, we kind of obviously pick stiff hydrophilic uh, O35 wires to go through the tortuosity. If that doesn't work, we use a telescoping technique where, where a O35 uh, uh, compatible four French 135 centimeter microcatheter is advanced in a 100 or 90 centimeter six French guide. So notice that the microcatheter is longer than the catheter in which it gets telescoped in order for the technique to work. And uh, the physics of telescoping uh, allow the operator to cross multiple tortuous areas um, and uh, in order to be able to pass the guide or the sheath to the destination. And finally, the new radial to peripheral portfolio includes 75, 85 centimeter uh, sheaths and uh, recently 95 and 105 centimeter sheaths, which allow us to also get to the carotid arteries. And uh, these are absolutely important to have at least one on the shelf uh, in extreme cases. And this is a described technique uh, by Brown et al. in CCI in 2009 where the telescoping technique is used with a 135 centimeter 0.18 compatible microcatheter inside a four French diagnostic 100 centimeter catheter, which is uh, itself inside a 90 centimeter six French or seven French guide. Notice the diagnostic catheter would be one to two French smaller than the um, inner diameter of a six French or seven French uh, guide. So that is also a helpful technique in extreme cases. And the third major obstacle to the heart is uh, obviously uh, tortuosity. And tortuosity is solved with the combination of wire, catheter, and sheath, um, O35 floppy glide wire, and a an, uh, my flexible microcatheter, whatever you have on the shelf, uh, mostly braided or coiled would be preferable. Uh, and once the tortuosity is crossed, uh, the wire is exchanged for a stiff 
035 wire, which may induce pseudo lesions like we see in the coronaries. So uh, we need to be aware of that with regards to limb ischemia, even though um, limb ischemia is way more resilient than a myocardial ischemia. But um, on the way back, usually an angiogram of the iliac uh, arteries while the wire is across is necessary. And obviously a sheath advancement should be under fluoroscopy uh, in case a resistance is met. We need to avoid pushing harder and finding out what the problem is in order to solve it. And uh, this is where also a telescoping technique uh, is very handy in overcoming obstacles. And so the second um, major topic is large bore access, which is required in most of our complex coronary interventions. Um, so before uh, proceeding with large bore access, it's always important to take a good peripheral angiogram. And since most uh, coronary diagnostic and interventional procedure is, uh, are radial, there is, uh, it's important to use a 150 centimeter uh, pigtail for French catheter or a multi-purpose catheter if you want to select the iliac arteries and take a good angiogram before deciding to stick a common femoral artery for large bore. So uh, highly recommended. And uh, more and more, we encounter patients with severe renal insufficiency in, in whom we cannot use those extra 15 to 20 cc's of contrast to minimize risk of contrast-induced nephropathy. And this is where uh, intra intravascular ultrasound is extremely helpful uh, from either a radial approach or from an ipsilateral uh, femoral approach uh, where we can evaluate the vasculature without using dye. The third approach is obviously CO2 gas, which is less available in my opinion, than intravascular ultrasound. And in terms of large bore sheath bed, once the decision is made to place a large bore after a diagnostic angiogram, obviously iliac uh, artery or axillary artery calcifications are um, difficult to deal with. And one of the tricks to deal with that is to actually spray the um, sheath, the large bore sheath with a... Um, Ablation, atherectomy lubricant, either Rotaglide or Viper Slide, whatever you have available in your lab, it's, which is usually uh, pretty commonly on the shelf and uh, in your uh, Pixis, and uh, kind of advancing that sheath through these calcified arteries after prep with intravascular lithotripsy or just simple balloon angioplasty if uh, focal calcium is uh, encountered. And uh, that should hopefully allow. Now, a lot of times uh, we face resistance and facing resistance is a big stop sign in the peripheral vascular world. You don't wanna push harder. You wanna find out what's going on. And it's highly recommended to use uh, balloon angioplasty or intravascular lithotripsy to uh, get the sheath to smoothly advance through a stenosis rather than kind of forcing a sheath in, which is a recipe for peripheral disasters. Um, in terms of um, also large bore sheath, um, we not only need to know how to place a large bore sheath, but also deal with the consequences of uh, closure of a large bore sheath. And what you see on the left hand side is a severe a common femoral artery stenosis from the per close uh, cinching up the artery uh, after large bore. Uh, closure and uh, we are doing an angiogram here from radial to peripheral prior to finishing up the case and uh, obviously this would have to be dealt with with a prolonged uh, five minute angioplasty at a low pressure in order to uh, prop the uh, artery back open and you can see here a pretty good angiographic result without uh, dissection or thrombosis uh, this is often just related to uh, extra cinching from the per close device. Um, 